Hi everybody! Uh, in today's video we're going to be talking all about moments and turning forces. Uh, so what I'm to say you need to uh, understand what a moment is uh, and you also need to be able to uh, calculate these moments. There's going to be a little bit of maths uh, involved. And um, we're also going to talk about this idea of moments when they are uh, unbalanced uh, so that means when they're not balanced, and then we might start to consider about uh, multiple moments as well. So we just need to go through a couple of uh, key bits of uh, vocabulary that we need. So whenever we're talking about moments, it's all to do with things that can turn, things that can swivel or pivot. So anytime you have something like my pen here um, that's held in place and can move one way or the other way, that is involving moments. When we're talking about moments, we always have this idea of a pivot point. So a pivot point is the point around which it turns. The effort, this is the force that we apply to the lever or the pivot that is actually causing it. So I have two efforts here. Um, the first effort is this force is acting on the, the, the load here. Um, and I've got an arrow pointing upwards, but obviously that's not the direction of the force uh, or the effort. The force um, is acting down uh, towards the ground from the weight of this uh, mass here. Sometimes you'll hear these things referred to as force multipliers. So the idea of a force multiplier is it's what levers do. They enable a small force to produce a large turning effect. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and sometimes we'll, we might refer to something as a load. So when we're talking about a load, that's the weight that needs to be lifted by a lever. Okay, so there's an old uh, there's an old saying, uh, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum or a place around which to put it, and I can move the earth. Um, and we can see this demonstrated here. So uh, if you think back to what we've done about vectors, here are two people trying to sit on a seesaw. So this chap here is a little on the large side, so if we think about vectors wise, his weight is going to be rather large. He's going to have a big force acting downwards, pushing him down. This chap here is a little bit smaller than the other guy. So he's going to have a really small weight force. So what we can see is because this guy is larger, he's going to turn that seesaw down um, so that this chap is up high in the air. So you might have come across this example before. If you've ever been to a playground with a younger sibling um, or an older sibling and you want to both use the, sweet, the seesaw, then what do you do? Well, intuitively, what we'd need to do, and what you may have actually tried uh, if you've ever been to the, the playground with a sibling, um, the, the way around it is you move the heavier person forward, well, that's not a very good colour to use, let's change my colour. Uh, we move the heavier person forward closer to the pivot point. So they come up this way and we move the lighter person further away from the pivot point. And what we've done there is inadvertently shown the really really useful property of pivots and levers which is I could, if I move the, 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 the small person, if I move him really far back, I could use him to move this larger person upwards. He could actually, uh, even though he's got a smaller force, he could have a larger turning effect. So in order to, um, let's go back a bit. So in order to understand how that works, we're gonna come up with a pretty simple equation. Um, and the equation that we're going to use is, let's use a better colour pen actually. Uh, the equation that we're going to use is one called a moment. So the general equation, I'm sorry my pen's a bit rubbish today. Um, an equa uh, equation for moment is a force multiplied by a distance. So in this instance, uh, the distance that I'm interested in is always the distance from the pivot to the point where the force is acting from. Uh, again, let me just change my colour so it's easier to see for you. 
Uh, let's go for a nice. No, I think the 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 blue works okay. So if I was to extend it down down this way, this would be my first distance, and this distance here would be a second distance. So let's call that D1 and this, sorry, D2 and that D1. So what I can do is I can say, well, what can I find out about the moments due to these people? So I'm going to label them person 1 and person 2. And then I'm going to say that moment 1, and I need to say which way is it acting. So a really easy way to work out if it's acting is to take your pen and hold it so that your finger is acting like the pivot point. Now I'm sort of uh, copying the idea of this uh, seesaw. And then I need you to push on the side of the force. So when I do that, you should be able to see um, on your diagram, this is trying to turn it anti-clockwise. And to show that it's trying to turn it anti-clockwise, I'm going to draw an anti-clockwise arrow like that. So I can say that the anti-clockwise moment there is equal to the force. So this will be the force due to person 1, multiplied by the distance between that force and the centre, which in this case is D1. I also have a moment acting in the other direction, and that one's trying to turn it clockwise. So that will be equal to the force 2, the magnitude of force 2 in newtons, multiplied by the distance that it is from the pivot. So that would be d2. Um, just want to think a little bit about the units that we use when we're talking about these things. So uh, this is more of a, an A-level skill that you have to uh, get used to as you go uh, through things, but it's, it's a nice skill to have here. Force, we know, is always measured in newtons. Distances must always be measured in meters. So what I get is something in newtons being multiplied by something in meters. So whenever we write a moment, we need to write it with the unit newton meters. That's unusual compared to a lot of the equations that we use. A lot of the time we would do something per something else. So be careful because some people would say newtons per meter and that would be wrong. Newtons per meter would mean newtons divided by meters. We're doing newtons times meters, so we give it the unit, capital N for newton, little m meters, newton meters. So obviously we've been thinking about uh, trying to balance things. There's an easy way of working out whether something will be balanced, and it's called the principle of moments. What we can say is that an object is balanced, in other words, it won't tilt one way or the other, if the sum of all the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of all the anti-clockwise moments. So this is a very typical question that you might see in the exam. Here's a rod, and, the, and you've been told that it is a balanced rod. And you're asked, what must the size of force W be if it's balanced? So here's how we set it up. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, W Again, take your pen and hold it and try and push it in the direction of the force. Um, so W is kind of acting over here and is trying to turn it that way. So I can say W um, is trying to turn it in a clockwise direction. And this 24 newtons, uh, that's trying to turn it in an anti-clockwise direction. Now you can see that both of them, both the forces are acting downwards. But because of where they are compared to the pivot, W is trying to turn it clockwise, uh, whereas the 24 Newton is trying to turn it anti-clockwise. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, force 1, and I'm going to call this force 2. So when I come to try and write this down as an equation, I'll just change my colour so it's once a little bit easier to see. Go for a good old teacher's red. What I can say is that force 2, which is acting anti-clockwise, because it's balanced, 
that must be equal to moment 1 which is acting clockwise. So now I need to work out what these two forces are. So I can say for force 2 that is force times distance so that is going to be the force which is 24 newtons multiplied by the distance which is 0 0.8 meters and that is equal to the moment acting in the other direction. So the moment acting in the other direction is a force that is force W let's try and write that properly multiplied by the distance which in this case is 4. So if I rearrange that equation um, hopefully you can see that what I need to do is divide both sides by 4 in order to get W by itself so W becomes 24 times 0 0.8 divided by 4 um, and I'm just going to plug that into a calculator because as I've told you on many occasions I'm really rubbish at mental maths so just grab my calculator out uh, 24 times 0 0.8 divided by 4 that comes to 4.8 and I need to give the unit so 4.8 and that is newtons multiplied by meters so it's 4.8 newton meters